Okay, so we're ready to uh, test this radio again. That's off, that's on, volume down. Everything seems to be ready to go. I think that's uh, phono, um, push button, AM. I think that's AM. Everything looks good. We don't need to connect these wires here to make it work. But we have the push buttons in, we have the speaker in. Everything looks good. Let's. There we go. Oh, I didn't plug it in yet. Hold on. <laughs> A little extra thrill there when I forget to plug things in like that. Okay. There we go. Okay, I can see the magic eye lighting up. I don't know why we hear it so much. I got the volume turned right down. Oh, no I don't. <laughs> I have the tone. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, we have no antenna connected other than the loop antenna. Let's tune around here. Oh, look at that. Hey, that's just perfect. Oh, that's really interesting how the eye uh, brightens up. And Funny signal there, too. Right? Let's try another band here. Good. That's great. Okay, very good. I think it passes that little test. I think the next thing is I need to clean this, this front plate up without losing more paint from it. Get the dust off it so it has a uniform background. And then this guy's back into the cabinet. And uh, then we need to set the pointer position uh, to make sure it's correct on the radio and uh, check it to see if uh, the dial reads properly. If not, then we have to adjust some oscillators to get that to read properly. But with any luck... Oh, wait a minute, you know what? I did make a mistake in aligning this set. One alignment step. Well, let's slide it in the box and just check it all out. We might have to take it out of the box again um, after a quick check. So, you know, what I could do, now, you know, I have no idea where to put the pointer exactly without putting it into the box. Um, there's usually some rule, you know, some mark, it turn the capacitor all the way to one extreme and then the pointer should be at a certain point. But often those marks are on the display. So they're not here. Because it is all about the relative position of the radio and the display, which can be, that can be a slight variation since the display the glass is mounted in the cabinet. Frankly, I don't think you can put this radio in <laughs> too much off to the sides, really. Um, but nevertheless, I think that's the next step. Put it back in the box, check it out, and uh, maybe do a quick check of the pointer alignment. And then I have to deal with the particular band that I aligned incorrectly. So, 
let's do that. I'm going to I'm going to stick this all back in the box. Oh, what do we do about the switches? The uh, band switches. They should be hanging around very awkwardly if I don't mount them right back in the box. Once I mount the switches back in the box, I can't pull the chassis back out. Likewise with the speaker, once I mount that back in the box, uh, pretty tough to operate this outside the uh, cabinet. A pretty long speaker wire here, but uh, but I think I really do need to take a look at where the pointer goes at this point. So a little cleanup back in the box. We'll see what we get. Okay, so I've cleaned up the front. It's still a little bit uh, damp there, so I think its color will lighten up just a wee bit, even as we're talking. And I put on the pointer here, and then I don't know where to put the pointer exactly, so I. I moved the radio to one extreme end and I mounted the pointer and then I slid it back and forth just to see if it makes sense. And what I noticed is on the way back there's a clear resting point here. It goes just past it, just past it a wee bit. So I'm going to assume that that's marking the extreme end of the travel of the pointer and I'm going to move it here. Easier said than done. Yeah, it's locked in there pretty good. There we go. So I just want to move it a fraction. So it's pretty much stopping where it stopped originally. That's what I think I've done. I have to kind of wait and see until it's back in the radio. in the cabinet. I already had it in the cabinet and got it in there and then realized, hey, wait a minute, I didn't clean the front, I didn't put the pointer on, <laughs> I had to take them all back out again. So I thought I'd give you another look at it. So now we're headed back into that uh, cabinet. You know, I just noticed about all these push buttons, they've got paint on them and that, that needs to be, these need to be cleaned up real nice. Um, so it maybe it's going into the cabinet, double check the alignment of the pointer, coming back out again for a little more bench work. Let's see. So I'll stick it back in. Okay. There it is. Okay, it's just about ready for a check of the uh, pointer alignment. signal generator going for that. Yeah, you know, this cabinet could use a pretty a pretty aggressive cleanup, so I think when the radio's out, I'm literally going to hose this guy down and uh, really let him have it. Uh, it. You know, it looks dirty. I don't know if somebody painted it and then tried to make it look old again afterwards. Can't imagine that. I think it's just some really bad cleaning jobs where you just basically, you know, move the dirt around with your cloth, don't really get it off. I think it's going to take quite a bit of effort to really uh, really clean them up nice. And I got the speaker up on top here, so I have not put it right back together. I do not have an antenna connected, so, but that, ah, that's a bit of a problem. Once you get it back in the cabinet, everything gets a lot more difficult. Do, especially in a small shop like mine. Okay, so I'm just connecting up the antenna here. It's actually not the antenna, it's the lead from my signal generator. There we go. Okay, let's plug it in. And I'm just going to adjust. Okay, I think we're ready to switch, switch it on. This time I'm going to turn it on from the front control. Oh, there's paint on here. 
from this has been oh probably paint from when this was painted. You have some spray here and there. So whoever painted it tried to you know did a very very careful job, especially painting down in through here and not getting it on the cloth. So they did a nice job on it, but they did manage to get paint onto the buttons. You know they would have been a lot wiser to just remove the button set out of here and paint away. I think you can see the original color in here now. Kind of a brown, of course. Not too surprising. Plus, this is nicked along here. And you can see the brown under it. Well, our purpose here is just to check the uh, pointer alignment. So, uh, let's see. We're at 950 on the signal generator. And we're putting out a pretty hefty signal there. So, I'm just going to dial this rate down to 950. What are the chances? It was right on 950. No, that's not 950. That's that's 1,000 or 1 megahertz. 950 kilohertz right there. 950. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Power on. Power on. See the exciting lighting effect in the front, and uh, it's very bright on the edges, of course, where the light is, which lights up these red numbers and this, these band uh, marks here. That looks kind of nice. Doesn't do a lot for the center area. There you can see the magic eyes come on. You get a little bit of volume here. I'm going to put on full voltage here. <laughs> Didn't that make a difference? Wow. Let me just turn the light out here. That's pretty nice, actually. Um, it looks a little different to my eye than you see in the camera. What you see in the camera looks a little brighter than it looks to my eye. It's beautifully lit in this area. and fairly evenly lit across it, so it's actually, it's actually pretty nice. I don't hear any signal though. I don't know this is on the AM band. Right. So I think this is the push button. Oh. I think this is AM. I think. Maybe not. Let's go one more. is my signal generator. Now it's not showing up at 950. Shame on me. If I hadn't moved that pointer over a wee bit, I think it'd be lined up perfectly. This is coming in at 9, uh, 990, I'd say. Too bad. There, let's go down on the bottom here. Dial this down to 600. Here we come. Five eighty five. pointer is a little high. It should be down a little bit here. It's a little high here. It should be down a little bit here. Let's go up to the top of the band. Uh, 1500. Right on 
around the 1500 mark. There we go. Well, that's about 1400, so that's way out. It's way out up here. Up here, and when it's sitting here, it's actually picking up down here. So it's non-linear. The problem's not not the same distance everywhere. Yeah. I got my whole, I got a big choice here where I can line up that pointer. But what I was hoping for is I would find out it's, you know, an eighth of an inch out everywhere. And I just slide the pointer over an eighth of an inch. Done. Let's, let's try one of the short wave bands here. So I'm guessing this is the 2.5 to 7. So let's go down to 2.5. Two point five right on the money. Now we'll take this up to two point five. Okay, so that's two point four seven. Two point two point four seven would be just down a little bit from here. So once again the pointer is on the high side. Pick it up here. Now, seven. And we'll go up to seven megacycles. Here we come. Now, this might be the band I did incorrectly. Because what I'm getting there is 6.7. 6.7 would be... Well, you know what? It's it, If I just slid the pointer a little bit, it'd be almost correct. So part of the correction here is to slide the pointer a little bit to the left. It's all The radio is always reading high. I know, I know it's a little bit of a vague statement, isn't it? Let's go up another band. Dial this down to 11.9. You want 11.9. Here we come. Ooh, where'd it go? What happened? I'm at 11.9. It's not picking up at all. Seems to be receiving. Nine. I can't show you my signal. Oh, maybe you can. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe you can see it. There we go. Wow, it's way off. That's 9.6. And I'm dialed in. Wow, let's wait a minute. Hold on a second. 9.6, this is the band below. What, what, 
what, what, what, what? Push buttons, AM, seven, the uh, B band, thirty one meters. I'm just stupid, that's all. So I don't know what I did. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll watch back my own video and see what kind of crazy stuff I was saying there. So I don't know how I ended up confused, but I did. Nevertheless, the interesting thing is that this turns out to be 9.6, 9 9.63, it should be way down here, not up here. Try dialing 9.6, let's go down for 9.5. 9.5, let's try that. So 9.46 instead of 9.5. And 9.46 would be quite a ways further down. So, so th this band is out of whack a fair bit. 31 meter band out of whack. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, now I'm on 11. 11.7 Jimmy. Definitely, this eye is too sensitive. There's no doubt about it. So now we're at 11.681, 11.7. That's not bad. Once again, just moving the pointer on the string would solve this. Eight is what eight seven five is what we're getting here, and again, just moving the pointer on the string just down a little bit would solve it. So, 25 meter band, good 19 meter band, 15.35. Mm. So that's reading 15, 15075, 15075, 15.075 is, is at the other end of this band. Wow, isn't that a bad, that's bad. Maybe that's the band I booped up, maybe I booped up more than one band. 1505, 15.05. Fourteen seven. Oh, I feel terrible. Okay, to the top band. Seventeen point seven. Seventeen point seven seven seven. 17.777 7, 7 would actually be this way this time. So here's the first one where the if I were to slide the pointer on the string, I'd be sliding it the other way. Wow. I thought I did a pretty careful job on the initial alignment. Don't think I did anything to alter the... Uh, 
the tuning of the uh, IF cir of the RF circuits on that, and they could change in capacitors and that, and change any capacitors and resonance circuits and stuff like that. Not that I realize. Anyway, let's go up to 22. So it's 22.1. What's happening there? signal generators doing that or the radios doing that? Or are my signal generators beating with another signal right on this frequency, which I'm fat chance would, would work like this. Tune the radio a little bit. Huh? has gone away. What the heck was that? Well, <laughs> some strange things happen sometimes. I'm trying to replicate that. I can't. Isn't that strange? I don't know what that was. Strange stuff. Well, there we are. Sounds like a complete realignment is required in terms of the oscillator. Uh, radio seems to be fairly sensitive everywhere. So I think that part's good. So aligning the oscillator won't, shouldn't be too tough on the radio. But it's pretty clear that aligning the radio without the dial face um, as well I've ended up pretty poorly aligned gee I'm just sitting here trying to think well, what what could it be that uh, is different now than then I don't know but this this radio has very wide band spread so for instance 9.5 megahertz and 9.7 are spread that far apart on this dial. On some other radios, that would be a tiny little spot on the dial. You'd have a hard time tuning between it. With this so broad, there's a good chance that you can read the frequency directly from and accurately from the dial if the thing is aligned properly. So if you want to listen to something at 9.6, it's it's here, or in this area here, uh, very very uh, accurately. And that's really what we got to achieve with this radio. I mean, we really shouldn't walk away from it. Uh, now this this bottom shortwave band uh, is a little bit different. It goes all the way from 2.5 to 7, and you know that's a that's a lot. That's quite a wide range. So here, you can't be accurate um, because literally the width of the pointer itself is covering a fair bit of the spectrum here. So not so critical on this. So if you have a radio that's got these non-spread bands, then alignment, well, how accurate can you be? But on a band spread radio like this one, it's worthwhile to get it really accurate. It has the potential. To, uh, to be read directly. Now, the nonlinearity. Well, some of these radios will have a capacitor at one end that you're adjusting and an inductor at the other. And you can kind of stretch, stretch it out, kind of change the general, um, what would be the word, uh, the linearity of the band. But I really think what they do is they build these radios as best they can, and then through experimentation they determine where on the dial each of these frequencies occurs, 
And then they make a non-linear dial to accommodate the limits of what they could do with their radio. And that's quite clear when you look at these dials, they're not, they're not linear, not particularly linear. I guess those are all the challenges of the radio uh, designers as they did these things. So, yeah, next step is another alignment. The good thing is we're almost done. Uh, probably only five more hours of work in here. <laughs> five? Jim, how can you say five? Well, the alignment's going to take time. No doubt about that. And then I've got to put the push buttons back in. And I'd like to set each push button to a particular station. And uh, in a sense, align those. I think that's more of a tuning thing than an alignment. So, you know, there's quite a few hours left on this guy yet. But the good news is it's working great. And, uh, you know, maybe the next thing is I'll, I'll deal with this cabinet. Because it's, it's a beautiful day outside. I can go outside. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll go outside clean up this cabinet and get out of my shop here. So, thanks for watching as we proceed. And remember what I said. I've got another one of these babies coming. See you soon.